Hello, and welcome to Game Art Essentials, Episode 2. We'll be talking about um, some of the issues that may come up when you are dealing with uh, rotating normal maps. Um, this is following up behind the, the previous episode where we were talking about uh, transferring textures when the UVs change on your model. Um, you know, sometimes you, you're finished texturing and you may want to um, change your UVs for whatever reason. Um, and sometimes that includes um, moving UV shells around, scaling, scaling them up and down, and um, even rotating them or flipping them. And uh, I showed some techniques for uh, being able to do that with um, other RGB maps, um, such as the diffuse map. And that's a, it's a pretty straightforward process um, until you get to normal maps, um, just because um, the colors in a normal in a normal map, they are so um, specific to uh, how the the normals will uh, be shown on the model. So um, let's go ahead and get started. Now at this point, some of you may be wondering, why even transfer the normal map? Um, why not just rebake it? Um, and then you would be assured of having um, the, the right result for the model with the new UVs. And while this is true, there are a few reasons why you might want to transfer the normal map instead. Um, the first being that it could be faster, uh, depending on the complexity of your model. Um, sometimes baking the normal map can be uh, a pretty involved process um, where you need to explode your mesh and, um, and maybe even composite a few different renders together or, um, y you know, who knows what kind of uh, corrections that uh, you may have made after the fact to make your normal map look good. Um, uh, not only that, but there are some a lot of details that you maybe you didn't bake. Uh, maybe you uh, used some 2D applications um, like Photoshop or uh, Endo, um, things like that to add additional detail. And you've already kind of you've gone through a lot of effort to create that detail. So trying to redo all of that again um, when you, uh, on a new bake of a normal map could be could be very time consuming um, as another situation where uh, it you may you, maybe you don't have any alternative other than transferring your normal map is um, let's say you don't have um, the high resolution source model anymore um, I, I know usually this isn't the case but um, uh, in a production environment, sometimes uh, you never know what to happen. Maybe a hard drive, someone's hard drive dies, and um, it maybe uh, they never checked in or backed up uh, their model, and um, all you have is a flattened uh, normal map file to work from. And but you still need to to use it. You still need to use this model for for other things. You need to make variants of it or whatever. And so at that point. You know, transferring could be your only option. Okay, here we have um, the the same models that I was showing in uh, the previous episode, except this time I have applied um, their respective normal maps to their color channel, just so you can see what the colors look like directly um, on the 3D model. Uh, one thing I wanted to get out of the way right away is um, the fact that when you look at the the seams on on a, on a model with when you put the the normal map in the color channel, um, you can see here on the along the neck here that um, things don't line up, and you can see that in other places too where they have where have UV seams like you know these these colors here don't line up, and um, that's perfectly fine. Uh, this, the colors on a normal map, when you, when you apply it to the color channel, they aren't necessarily meant to line up like that. So, um, and the only reason why I'm bringing this up is because I've had some people in the past um, point this out to me on their own models, and you know they think they're doing something wrong um, when they're they're actually not. Like th this is actually normal. Um, you, I wouldn't expect. Um, the colors to match here, especially if uh, the UV shells aren't oriented um, exactly in the same way. Okay, so now that we have that out of the way, uh, if you take a look at the target here, 
the target model. Now, so what I did here was I I transferred the normal map. Um, I I put the let me go a step back a second. I, I put the normal map into the color channel and then I transferred um, that as an RGB texture, uh, the same way as I did with the diffuse map in the previous episode. And the result is this. You can see that we're getting the same kind of result here. You have the same colors showing up all, along the next seam and, and, and everywhere else, really. Um, now, the thing about this is that this is actually not going to work. Um, if you look at the UVs for both of these models, and I showed this before, I just want to show it again. Um, you know, the, the way things are laid out here, um, the, the normal app was baked specifically for the orientation of um, these UV shells. And so when you reorient them, like I have on this other model, um, if you try to do, uh, just try to use the same um, orientation of the colors on a normal map on this new model, it's not going to work. And to demonstrate that, let me just switch back to viewport 2.0. So this is the the same model, except um, with without any color uh, applied and with only the normal map visible. Now from a distance, you might think that, oh yeah, um, they look fine. But if you if you look pretty if you look more closely, um, you'll see that this model has a ton of problems going on with it. If you, we look at the seams again, you can see that the norm map is um, not correct in this area as opposed to on this model where it's you know it's perfectly seamless. And you can see on a lot of other places too, you can see the belt has a lot of shading artifacts. It's getting screwed up where this one's nice and clean. Um, and so I, I think it's being able to uh, train your eye to recognize problems on the norm map, like you can see here again, um, and on the wrinkles on the arms here. This is actually a little bit harder to, to detect at first glance, you might think that this is this might be okay, but um, when you compare it to um, to this, you, it's it's obvious that it's not. Um, so it, it's a good thing to, to try to train your eye to recognize problems in normal maps, um, and just because uh, I feel like there are a lot of uh, students out there who will kind of live with results like this. Um, you know, the, just the by the virtue of it looking kind of bumpy, um, sometimes people think that oh, that's that's fine. Um, when you really have to have higher standards when you're um, evaluating your normal app. Um, if you know, if you if you if we're to bring your high res model in the same scene and you and you looked at your uh, normal app low poly model next to it, it should look almost identical. Um, you can see how just how clean this looks compared to to this, and this is really what you should be striving for. So to transfer the normal map, I'll be using X normal. Uh, in the previous episode, I mentioned that I didn't like to use X normal to transfer textures as much as I do like uh, using Maya's built-in transfer maps feature. Um, but for the normal map, I'm going to have to use XNormal because Maya's transfer map feature doesn't really uh, take into account the tangents uh, when it's transferring uh, the diffuse data. So it's not really going to work, um, at least as far as I know. Um, if someone knows of a way to use uh, Maya's transfer maps feature while uh, to transfer normal maps, uh, please do let me know. Um, but uh, you, you know, using XNormal is perfectly fine for this. I, it has it creates really good results. Um, the way it's set up is pretty much the same as I talked about in the previous video. So I'm going to try to go through this really quickly. Um, I have the all the source meshes um, from this this model loaded to uh, the high definition meshes, and then for the low definition meshes, I have the target model loaded here. 
And for baking options, I just have bake base te texture on. And back on high definition meshes, what you're going to want to do is you want to um, check this box here. Base texture is a tangent space normal map. And then load in uh, your normal map for all of your meshes. And then that's pretty much it. And all you have to do is hit generate maps and it will uh, create some textures for you. So let's take a look at um, how the new normal map uh, transferring looks on the model. Uh, again, this is the uh, the bad result here with the uh, with the normal map transferred um, using the method that we talked about in the first episode. And if I load in the corrected version, this is yeah, this is rendered from X normal. You can see that. Overall, everything is a lot cleaner and it's pretty much identical now to the original model. Let's try to look at the normal map to get a better understanding of what exactly is going on here. Um, if you look at the source normal map, uh, for example, if we if we examine the the channels here, um, you can see in the red channel um, things look like they're being lit from the right side. So, for example, if you look at her kneecap here, this is her leg uh, UV shell. Um, it looks like there's a light coming from the right side, and then the shadow is on the on the left side. And then, if you look at the green channel, um, see the knee is not going to be a very good example. If you look at the belt here, it looks like it's being lit from above and shadowed from below. So on, on the red channel, I, I, I like to think of it as um, left and right, and on the green channel, um, up and down. And then the blue channel is, um, is just kind of additional information that we're not gonna, gonna worry about. Um, although as, as an interesting aside here, if you look at both the red and green channel together, you kind of get this result here. Um, and sometimes if you look at normal maps from games, um, Sometimes the normal map will actually look like this, and that is because um, they are getting rid of the blue channel. Um, the, the idea behind that is that um, if you know, let's say um, A, A plus B equals C, um, if you know what A is and you know what B is, then you should be able to figure out what C is. Um, so that that's kind of the idea is like, hey, you dump one of the channels in the normal map, you can use that the blue channel for something else for like a mask or or any other kind of um, um, uh, eight bit um, information um, for uh, your shader. And then at uh, at runtime, the game engine can figure out what the blue channel is and, you know, fill in the fill in the gaps and uh, recreate the normal map. Um, for you. Um, but yeah, that's just a, an interesting aside. Uh, I, I do remember seeing some uh, norm maps like this earlier on in my career and wondering what exactly was going on. Why, why did the norm maps look like this and not like, like that? Um, but you know, that's why. Um, so n now that we have a better understanding of what these channels do, um, you can see then why this normal map is wrong. Um, you could. This is the the bad normal map that was transferred using the method we talked about in the previous episode. And if you remember here, um, the belt here looked like it was being lit from above, right? So when you rotate it like this here, um, I would expect the lighting to be different. Like the the lighting. All this was, all this did hit was um, it was it took this piece and it rotated it um, counterclockwise to get this result, which which isn't going to look right. Um, you'd want the this green light to look like it was um, highlighting the top of edge of the belt instead of um, towards the left, like it's showing here now. Now, if you look at the the good. Um, transfer the normal map. You can see um, what it looks like here under the belt. 
you can see the top edge is getting that green lighting um, and the bottom edge too but uh, that's that's just because of, um, of the way I laid out the UVs it's getting stressed as the norm map is wrapping around the bottom edge um, of that belt there um, so that's one way to look at um, norm apps and just kind of um, you know troubleshooting things why things look look uh, right or wrong and um, in this case I, I am using um, a minus y uh, for norm map uh, basically uh, the green green looks like it's uh, being the light coming from above looks like it's green um, and it's, you know depending on what uh, game engine you're working towards um, this may be different sometimes um, it's a positive Y which would mean that the green light would look like it's being lit from or the object would look like the green light is being coming from below instead of above now there are ways to uh, rotate normal maps um, without using X normal um, I do think using X normal is probably the the safest way and you know the most foolproof way to account for all of the different um, situations that you run into but uh, with just sticking within Photoshop you can rotate normal maps um, as long as you stick to 90 degree increments and the reason for that is um, like like I mentioned before um, if you if you think of red being left and right and green being um, up and down um, it's actually pretty easy to invert these um, if you just press Control I within these channels. You can see what happens. You can see um, it, it goes from being lit from the right side to be being lift, lit on the left side and on the green channel, being lit from the top to being lit from the bottom. Um, so really, if you knew what you're do you're doing, you could copy these channels out, you know, invert it yourself, um, paste it back in, and then. Um, you can safe, safely rotate uh, your your normal map piece in 90 degree increments. Um, now, you know that's really cool if you know how to do that. But um, it'd be it's a lot easier to use uh, normal map actions. And I have a link to uh, the suite of normal map rotation actions in the video description. Um, but what 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 this has is just a lot of uh, different. Um, presets for rotating your normal map here and for example if I just hit um, rotate 90 degrees clockwise inverted Y which is the the tangent that we're using um, here you can see what happens is it you can see it automatically corrects all the colors for you um, the green is still look, looks like it's coming from above for example and if you drill down into what exactly this action is doing um, you can see it it's pretty straightforward. Um, it, it's doing ex exactly what I mentioned before, where you know you s select the the proper channels, the the proper color channels. You, you copy them out, um, invert them at where necessary, and uh, paste it back in after you've um, you you've rotated your piece. Well, that about wraps it up for rotating normal maps. Um, there are some other alternatives out there, and I've tried to um, include some links in the video description below um, to those for those of you who are interested. Um, and of course, if anyone out there has any uh, other methods that they'd like to share, please do in the comments below.